So the last product that I've been looking at, stay tuned for the review, it will be going on the homepage very soon, is the new JVC NZ7 laser projector. Uh, we've got a review of the NZ8 up already, uh, been up for about a year that one. Getting stock is the main thing, um, getting review samples in it has not been easy from JVC, they are so popular at the minute. And obviously with everything else going on in, in the world with uh, part strategies and so on, uh, stock has been low, so it's taken a while for these review samples to come through from JVC, but um, the NZ7, it's one of those JVC products that kind of knocks it out of the park. Um, I've had both the Sonys in before this arrived, um, the 7000 and the 5000 from Sony. 7000, a very, very good projector, very pricey projector at 15 grand. The NZ7 beats it, <laughs> beats it hands down. And that's literally within five minutes of, of switching on and viewing a little bit of content. Um, I don't know what the secret sauce is with JVC, but they just seem to uh, nail it every time when it comes to a projected image. And obviously a projected image is completely different to a normal TV uh, direct view uh, display. There's just something about a reflective image which you know makes it cinematic to start with. Um, and JVC really do a fantastic job. It's not that accurate out of the box, which is a little bit annoying. And it is a bugbear with me and myself and Jules were having this conversation on, on Friday. Um, you know, these are products that go into professional environments or they go into custom install and so on. So maybe there is a, an assumption that these will be calibrated in the field. But even then, using the calibration controls built into them, um, it, they're not easy to calibrate. And you really need to use their AutoCal software, uh -huh. JVC's AutoCal software. And you have to use it with meters that are not particularly accurate, uh -huh. um, not particularly great. Uh, so I can't hook up a Klein, you couldn't hook up, um, you know, one of your expensive meters, Jules, or maybe you can in a uh -huh. roundabout kind of way. Um, new professional calibrators know these things. Um, that's the only bugbear I have. And it's annoying because JVC used to be great at giving you the controls in the projector. You used to get your gamma editor, you used to get, um, you know, a, a CMS that would work. You used to be able to dial it in pretty accurate um, and th that seems to have disappeared now and they seem to be relying a lot on the, the AutoCal system without giving you the flexibility to use accurate meters. So if there's one bugbear, that's a big bugbear for me is, is getting it accurate. You can calibrate it, it's just a pain um, to get it looking uh, any good. The, the big plus point for me is their um, frame adapt HDR. Um, it is absolutely astonishing, especially with the laser engine. Uh, colors look fantastic. Black levels amazing. Shadow details really, really good. And the lens on this one, the sharpness, just um, yeah, really, really good. So that review is coming up soon. Um, I'm just checking to see if we've got any questions before we go into uh, some other bits and pieces. Uh, so Pat says, first time catching you all live. Phil, are you going to review the eight hundred seven fifty five inch? No. Uh, I've reviewed the 65. I'm just writing that up now. So there's the 48 and the 65 in the 807. 55 and 65 will be the same. They use the same panel. 48 is a slightly different panel. So there is a slight difference in uh, audio quality there. Um, and I think that's all the questions asked up till now. So let's move uh, I, on. I have, a, I have a question on. about the NZ7, uh, if you don't mind. Um, so you, you said it'd be Sony 7000, hands down. Um, was there anything about the Sony? which was superior in it, or was it just a, a, a clean run for the JVC? Um, no, the Sony is good. I, the problem with this Sony is it, it and the same with it, most of their displays is it shows a little bit too much in terms of shadow detail out of the box. Um, it's a trait that they've got. I don't know if it comes over from their professional displays or not, um, but they, they definitely show a little bit too much shadow detail, which then shows up a little bit too much noise um, in darker scenes. Um, sharpness is excellent. The, the lenses are always great on them. Um, video processing is very good, but it's a very processed image. Um, again, much like the TVs, and it's using the X1 Ultimate uh, processor in there. There is backdoor, there is backdoor processing going on. Um, so, and you can't switch it all off. Um, so, if that's an issue for you, then uh, then yeah, the, the 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 Sony does kind of overcook the image a little bit. But a lot of people uh -huh. like that image. Um, a lot of people go for that look. So, um, is there a right and wrong? No, it's it what you prefer. But if you want to do it properly and and have accuracy, 
I think the JVC yeah. just looks that little bit more uh, cinematic to me. Yeah. Con- again, contrast is king, isn't it? I yeah, mean, and, and, and the other thing is, yeah, the Sony's the Sony's got probably more uh, more lumens, um, but what you really need with any projector dealing with HDR is is a form of dynamic tone mapping, yeah. and, and and what you get in the JVCs is excellent, it's very very good. Yeah. Yeah. It then it transforms transforms the picture. Yeah, it's it's much superior to to the way Sony are doing it. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, Doug. It's and and again, it's I spent quite a bit of time with the seven thousand, and within five minutes of switching the JVC on, it was like wow, mm-hmm. and I didn't have that reaction with the Sony. Oh, 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 oh